Isaac Newton dropped an apple to create gravity and the ripple effect in time led you to watch this video, showcasing over 100 Minecraft mods to improve your world. Introducing new mobs, dimensions, items, weapons, and plenty more. These are mostly mods I've showcased before, but there's some new ones added in here. The last quarter of this video is client-side mods for anyone who's just looking for them. So strap yourself in, have a glass of melted ice, let's get right into it, you reincarnated dino nuggy. Driving boats is a great way to get around oceans in the overworld. But what happens when you get stuck on an island in the nether with only a stack of obsidian and a crafting table? The lava lakes in the nether can be rather large, and I wouldn't recommend swimming across them. But don't stress, just grab your obsidian and lay down the blocks in a U-shape and you can craft your own obsidian boat. Now you can freely motorboat and drift your way around the forbidden orange juice without taking any damage. And you can even go right through the lava waterfalls because the obsidian boat vaults taking damage. Just don't stop under it or you will sink your boat and fall out of it. And side note, these boats do not work in the overworld. You would just sink in water and turn yourself into a submarine until you run out of breath. Visual Workbench turns crafting tables into more of a decoration. Now when you place items on your table and leave them there, they will appear on top of the table. So you can say your crafts for later or just have it look like a cool little decoration. So you can tease villagers with floating emerald blocks that they will never be able to afford. One thing I love about this mod, it's not just the items floating above the table, but also the arrangement of the items gets shown and always faces you. So this would be a great mod to showcase custom items or your mods on servers to show people how to build them. Let's travel back in time and catch the Spanish flu with medieval weapons. This adds in a bunch of new weapons that have some useful skills. We now have an axe that we can throw at enemies for you wimps out there that don't want to get too close. And that can also be used as good decoration. There is a javelin that you can yeet around to turn mobs into kebabs and also a good way to enter the Olympics with javelin practice. A scythe sword which is useful for harvesting crops, mainly wheat, and the bendy sword just looks so cool. Oh, you even get cool animations with some of these weapons, like holding it with two hands and moving your arms above your head. I really like how the mod creators went above and beyond to add this in. A staff of healing so you can do some Shazam magic to heal yourself, but make sure mobs aren't near you or they will send you to the graveyard. It takes a bit to do and it only heals you up a certain amount of hearts. A battle axe that has knockback over 9,000, so it does some damage while also protecting you and it just looks so damn cool. There is a longer sword that you can use to block like a shield much easier than having to craft a shield as you can use your meat stick to protect yourself. Clears up so much space on your screen, but it doesn't protect you from bow and arrows. So if you want to fight the skeleton, bring a shield along. You can also ride a horsey and go jousting with the lance to inflict more damage with the inertia of your oversized doggo. And who doesn't want to do a drive-by in their horse donkey mobs on the head? You can also use a reaper, which has a chance of making mobs bleed, which can be effective in hordes of mobs. It doesn't work on every hit, but every now and then the mob will take damage when you don't touch it. This is a great little mod that can be perfect for mod packs and each item looks great with useful special effects. No more living life on easy mode. Now let's make the dragon as angry as your mum when you forget to take dinner out of the freezer. True ending makes the end island feel like a boss fight with particles floating around the island which looks great. End crystals are now blue and it tells you how many crystals are left each time you blow one up. Which why isn't this in vanilla Minecraft? The dragon shoots more dragon breath at you now so I hope your endurance is up to speed. But that's not all. Every now and then, she will rise up into the heavens only to come down for a ground pound, pushing out a shockwave big enough to move Jabba the Hutt. But she looks damn good when doing this maneuver. And if you slap her enough, she will get cranky and send out a swarm of dragon breath. And these will linger around for a while. But that's not all. When she has had enough of your shit, she brings out the angry mama bear. She will belly flop on you so hard it bounces her back into the stratosphere, where she unleashes a defense mechanism straight from the Death Star scary enough to make Satama need new undies. This is a deadly maneuver, which is hard to avoid. But all is fine and dandy once you get her health down to empty, just like my fuel tank. She gracefully floats up into the air accepting defeat. And she only requires one more blow to be defeated. You can't shoot arrows at her, but you can walk underneath her and ascend up to give her the final blow. All it takes is one hit and you have conquered the end of the game. I also had physics mod installed, that's why the dragon's body flopped around like that. This is honestly one of the best dragon fight mods I've ever seen, and I recommend everyone install this and give it a go. Do you want a mod that makes you feel more alive? Well, nymph spiders will make mummy need to change your diaper. Your heart will be racing seeing spiders now move like proper Australian spiders and climb up walls like God intended, instead of them doing the face slide to climb, which has got to hurt by the way. They now also hang sideways on walls and upside down on roofs, which is quite terrifying. The screams of your siblings at 3am 
a.m. when Peter Parker comes running at you from the other side of your house will be hilarious with this mod. This mod is full of nightmare fuel when exploring mine shafts now and could be perfect for your Minecraft horror world. Towns and Towers is easily one of the best villager mods there is, giving you a brand new village town for every biome you enter. This mod overhauls all villages and even adds in brand new villages to your world. With brand new styles and themes, you can incorporate villages into your own builds, but this does not make them any smarter, so you may want to try save these guys. The unique styles and builds to each village in every single biome is unreal, making it such a standout mod. Even pillagers get some love with plenty of new house designs to complement any biome they make a home in. Will the new home make them any nicer? Are you bored with biomes in your world? Regions Unexplored gives Minecraft biome generation an overhaul and adds in a biome for each year your granny has been alive. The 70 new biomes this mod gives you is insane and each biome has a lot of detail to it by adding in new blocks and decorations. It even overhauls some of the vanilla biomes like deserts, making them look more attractive and they're now a little bit more dangerous to explore. As some of the sand is now quicksand and isn't afraid to munch on you and eat you whole. Caves also get an overhaul with some new cave biomes which fit in very well and add in plenty more ores for you to find. Even the nether gets a lot of love with how great some of these biomes look and it just adds some more life down here and makes it look like Satan cares about his home and it gives you more reason to come build a home down in the nether and just gives you a more enjoyable time when exploring down here. But the end doesn't get any new biomes which is unfortunate for you end lovers. There is also plenty of new blocks added with this mod to cater for you decoration and creative builders. This truly is a great mod. Enchanting Infuse is the enchantment mod you didn't know you needed until now. This this mod gives you two brand new enchanting tables which can go in well with your enchanting room. To make one of these bad boys all you need to do is place items in this order and you got yourself an enchanting infuser. But you can add some spice with some netherite and make yourself an advanced enchanting infuser. These tables give you the power to choose what enchantments you want on your items so you no longer waste levels trying to find the perfect weapon. And it also makes it easy to see which enchantments are compatible with each other. It also tells you how many bookshelves are around it so you can get an accurate reading on how many more you need. The advanced Advanced enchanting table also allows you to remove enchantments in case you don't like them or want to get them off an item you found. This truly is a great mod for enchanting and makes it so much more easier and enjoyable. Dungeons Now Loading is a mod that adds in brand new structures around your world. All these structures are made from vanilla blocks so they don't feel out of place. Some of these structures are small and cozy and fit right in perfectly to your vanilla world. And there are structures so large they could house 10 whales but they aren't big enough to house your mum. These structures spawn all over your world in various biomes and each comes with a set of challenging mobs and rewarding loot. There are some structures that will contain new bosses and these bosses don't take no shit and come fully equipped ready to destroy you when you enter their humble abode. But if you manage to defeat these bosses, you can turn their pad into a great home. The effort and detail gone into this mod is a ripper and well worth checking out for anyone who likes exploring, likes challenging new bosses, or who wants to spice up the vanilla lifestyle. Overall, this adds in three brand new bosses and heaps of new housing styles to challenge you or make great additions to your farms. You've seen this cool YouTube video, so you loaded up your Xbox, built a glowstone portal to escape to a new dimension, but then this happens. Oh, what the fuck? But when done on PC, when you place the water, it opens a portal to a new dimension. It's the Nether's big sister, the Aether. This dimension is up in the sky, filled with floating islands, lots of new life, blocks, ores, and plenty more. Upon coming to this beautiful world, you are greeted by cute new animals, like pigs and cows with angel wings, but be careful when admiring them. Slimes up here act like vans giving out free candy, and will pick you up as a hostage, and jump with you only to unalive bomb itself back to the earth, and you'll take some slight damage. Oh, and watch out for these little tornadoes. They will not hesitate to send you to Satan's doorstep and yeet you into the abyss. There is also three new dungeons to stumble across. Just like the Olympics, we have the Bronze Dungeon, the Silver Dungeon, and the Gold Dungeon. Each dungeon will have its own set of mobs in there ready to eat you out. The silver dungeon floats up in the sky and will have the worst mob created, the Mimic. So be careful when opening chests, as this is no ordinary chest. It is a Steve eating chest only wanting to snack on that booty. And the Valkyrie also lurks around here, just trying to give you jump scares. And you don't want to go around punching the Valkyrie. You can also do little side quests with the Queen Valkyrie or battle her in a duel. Would recommend bringing a spare pair of undies to this dungeon. The bronze dungeon is located in the land. You will stumble across a cave the size of your mum. So you enter, and after a long walk, you stumble across a room with a big cube, and his name is Slider, because he slides. So you give it a slap, and it starts attacking you. But your mummy didn't raise a wimp, so you attack that cube back and beat it, and declare victory over the cube cave. And lastly, we got the gold dungeon. These dungeons spawn inside big island balls, 
and look beautiful when walking around them. But when you enter, you see this dude staring at you, so you annoy him until he attacks you. And just like any normal boss, he shoots his weakness, the ice cubes, so you can slap them back at him and unalive him. But he will also shoot fireballs and release his minions to do his dirty work for him. So bring some armor in here with you. Each boss drops a secret key and opens a hidden room when you beat them for a nice little victory gift. Along with all these cool features, there is also plenty of new armor and weapons to choose from and have fun with. So you can bring them into the overworld and slaughter all the normal villagers and mobs with. There are plenty of things I've missed in this mod, which I'll leave as a surprise for when you install it. Let's add in a new difficulty with bosses of mass destruction. This mod adds in four brand new bosses to your world, and starting out, we got the ice tower located in Antarctica, which is homed by the Lich. This ice wizard flies around the tower, disappearing and reappearing in random locations. He shoots out spells which can cause some damage, and spells which will even slow you down. And if getting wizard facials wasn't enough, he will summon phantoms, because why not? If you manage to beat Walmart Harry Potter, you will be rewarded with some great loot, so it's worth the fight. This tower also has spawners in it, so you'll be in for a fight when you first arrive. So come well prepared. The Void Blossom is a shower, not a grower. Once you enter his home, he will unleash hell on you, raising up spikes from the ground and throwing out poison bombs at you. Don't get too close with hitting it as the thorns will hurt you. And he will keep regenerating health from his little flowers around, so make sure you keep breaking them so you can hurt it. And these flowers will keep spawning, so you'll have to keep on breaking them. And the plant is like a child and overreacts when it dies, but it's got a pretty cool death animation. The nether gauntlet hides away, but when you break a block to his coffin, you get greeted by this beautiful thing. He may look cute, but he will bro fist you out of existence. Unlike PewDiePie, he bro fists to unalive you. Besides bro fisting, he shoots laser beams out of his eyeball, which can destroy any block it touches. And for his final move, he will turn the lights out so he can fist you in the dark. The hardest thing about this boss is he's always floating away from you, so I hope you're good at shooting arrows. Overall, scary boy. 7 out of 10, do not recommend this one. Now lastly, we go to the end and find a new rare structure. Be sure to bring a spare ender eye with you so you can summon the Obsidolith. He is built like a brick shit house since he is made out of obsidian. But this behemoth can do wizardries and attack you with spells. And he's got a few different spells up his sleeve, so he'll constantly take you by surprise. And they can get you at any distance whether you're close or far from it. And he's not afraid to knock you off this structure. He will also launch up in the air and try to crush you with his big old booty cheeks. Overall, this is the hardest boss to try and beat. And you better be well equipped when you summon this one, because he will show you no mercy. So, you just invited your girlfriend over, and you want to show her your Minecraft achievements. Well, Advancement Frames lets you show off your advancements in such a great way. And after showing these off, you will be wondering where your girlfriend's clothes at. To make one of these frames, you just need to punch an orphan and go into your crafting table. Place down eight sticks and an emerald in this order. And wham, bam, thank you ma'am, you got yourself an Advancement Frame. Now place the frame anywhere you like, and it will open your Achievements Panel for you to pick what you want on the frame. You will have to complete the advancement for it to be used on a frame. But these frames are so well done, they make getting achievements so much more worth it. And these fit in so well with vanilla Minecraft. But if you're lazy like me, here's a little cheat code to get all the advancements in the game. Do you ever feel like someone is watching you, or that your uncle is right up in your booty? Well, don't stress out, it's just a creeper. With peeping creepers, creepers will now no longer explode unless you look at them. And this is super OP, because when there's two behind you, they will kiss each other until you turn around and look at them. And you can even lure the creeper to those annoying children and destroy everything they love. And if they survive that, use their freshly destroyed bed to put a halo above their head. But one structure that does not blow over in the wind is nether portals using the immersive portal mod. Gone are the days of loading screens as you can now wander from one dimension to the other. And this mod is pretty crazy as nether portals don't obey the Minecraft laws anymore. And you can place it on the ground and in any shape you want. You can also stack portals to make different in and out points in your world. As well as making portals any shape you want, you can also make them any size you want. So you don't have to make average size portals anymore. You can also access these portals from any side you like. And they can be used as a great elytra course if placed in the right positions. Are you brave enough for an elytra race in and out of the nether? But I think the best part about this mod is not having any more loading screens and just being able to freely come in and out of the nether. After a long day of fisting spiders, you just want to relax. So come over to your hammock provided by the sleep type mod. This mod gives you a hammock so you can sleep in style and rock yourself to sleep. And instead of sleeping straight away, you get full control of looking around so you can look up at the night sky. You can also swing side to side. And if you do it enough, you'll fling yourself out of it and get an achievement. And the best part of the hammock, it's used for daytime sleeping. So now you can get to your nights quicker. There is also a sleeping bag which can be placed down anywhere during the night and it gets picked back up when you wake up and the sleeping bags have a nice look to them perfect to use around campfires this mod also adds in bed bugs and when they get near a bed they scurry to bury themselves in it and when they're inside they look so happy bouncing around but you can't sleep in the bed anymore so there's only one thing left for you to do blow up the bed
Then go and break another villager's bed. Slap him in the face to assert dominance. Then go and punch Derek in the face and wake him up to steal his bed. This mod adds in new sleeping mechanics so you can now lay down without sleeping and look around. And you can also get nightmares, which will make it so you can't sleep for the rest of the night. When we got the 1.18 update, Mojang forgot one thing, extend the world height living in the nether. But it's okay, the community does what it wants, when it wants, and extended the nether height limit themselves. The nether is now beautiful with so much more room for activities. By amplifying the world generation, making layers like onions, and creating beautiful nether mountains, biomes can also generate on islands in different layers above and below each other, which is a cool touch. No more flying into walls with your elytra now. Instead, you can do a drive-by slap on a ghast. Well, it appears I got myself into a bit of a situation here. The pillagers, they're evolving. Please help me. Don't let me die out here. I bet that guy didn't plan his day to end up like that. So let's examine why it went wrong. He installed a mod called Illage and Pillage, which gives the pillagers a bigger buff than Hotaru Hagenzuka and makes them an Avengers level threat. And here we have the Spirit Olager, who's just staring off into the distance. I got no idea what he's looking at, but when you smack him with your Eshe stick, he does the Squidward dance to perform some magic and turns into an unstoppable fairy. Just like the anti-Goku, he will suck the life force out of you and turn that energy into a weapon of killing. He summons the fire gods to set alight anything who wants to harm it, and he will shoot laser beams and create magic hands to yoink you out of existence. This pillager had enough of being bullied and hit the gym in his lumberjack outfit to become an absolute unit of a creature. I'd be steering clear of this weapon. Thor's not even worthy enough to pick up this hammer. This guy has resting bitch face because of how big his eyebrows are. But give him a slap and his inner Doctor Strange comes out. And this dude is not to be messed with. As you can see, Gator don't take no shit and he will happily alt F for you out of existence. He will unleash hell and even has the ability of the reality stone to make big old creepers and blow up anything around it. Now, if you smack the town emo, he will spawn in a helpless soul and perform an exorcism on them and turn them into an average Aussie spider. Which he can also be riding and throw scythes and axes around at innocent bystanders who are minding their own business. Which I think this is pretty terrifying if you ask me. I'd probably poo my pants a little if this thing was charging at me. There is also an alligator with super speed who has villager meat on the menu. Chances are you can't outrun him, so I hope you like being munched on. There is also a pillager who can shoot flames out of a furnace, because who doesn't like a little homemade flamethrower? The great Aussie spider is your sleep perilous demon. He can dig a hole underground and spawn right underneath you munching on those little toes. They also launch out webs which slow you down and they release little pumpkin bombs, which will hop towards you and do some damage. I'm glad the Earth Spiders missed this update. Overall, this is a super fun mod, and the creators have put a lot of time and effort into this. I'd recommend checking it out for a good time. Piglin expansion adds in some new structures around the nether to home piglins. You can find these structures in the forbidden orange juice lakes or up in the roofer's ships. And in these structures, there is always a good set of loot to find, just like in the Bastion. But if that's not good enough for you, there is also new blocks, armor, and weapons, and they look pretty damn cool. Cool. This definitely makes the piglins a bit more exciting to deal with. And these structures spawn wherever they feel like it. So you may find these infused with nether fortresses. Torch bow gives a whole new function to torches and bows. Now you can shoot your torches with your bow to light up the area ahead of you, making it super easy to light up areas without having to walk to them. Or if you want to spawn proof your own area, it can be done with ease now. Don't even have to leave your own home. You can also shoot nine torches at once for maximum efficiency, and it just looks cool. But it gets even better. You can even set mobs on fire with it, making it easier to get cooked food from your farm animals. And it's just easier to send orphans to meet their parents. Elytra trims is the missing feature from the Tales and Trails update. Just just like with the armor, you can use new trims found in various structures around your world to give your elytra a new look. And pairing them with ores gives you colors to suit any design you like, giving you more reason to go exploring in your world to find the new trims you desire. And let's be honest, the vanilla elytra looks boring. Who doesn't want to spruce up their life a little bit? No longer is the end dimension flat like the earth. Nullscape turns the end into a dystopian onion by adding in so many layers, new biomes, and new blocks. The world height limit is extended enough to fit your big ass forehead, and it makes for some wicked views when exploring while also making the end a bit more scary to explore because those stupid air stingrays now spawn in the end, so be prepared to be annoyed when exploring the ends now. Just like the local priest, a great touch added to the end is the ender dragon skeletons, 
which I think is a great addition to the end. And it adds into the Minecraft world lore. The biomes make exploring the end less of a wasteland and more enjoyable, and the views you can see flying around these biomes is magnificent, along with these cool new biomes and islands. There is also some items that can be found for overworld decoration, and Spawn Island with the dragon gets a little overhaul, making the Ender Dragon fight a bit more fun. I think this mod is perfect for an end update, as it doesn't change too much of the end, but gives it the perfect little revamp like the nether update did. We all know I don't have a good track record, when visiting villages. And today, we are going to keep the Thrill House tradition going and team up with some pillagers and go take down Wall Rose with a little mod called Attack on Villager. And unfortunately, you don't get to turn into a Colossal Titan to nuke a village full of orphans. But once you obtain the ominous banner, by combining these together, you want to run towards a village. And when you arrive, a bolt of lightning will strike down, spawning a freak of nature. The villager will draw their swords and get superpowers. But you also spawn in an army that could make Thanos scared to show these villagers they are immortally challenged. But like the armored titan, these villagers pack a punch. They get a sword that will easily turn you into a kebab and they also join the speed force. Just look at the speed they move at now. I hope you wear your running shoes when trying to fight these guys. But there is one you must be careful of, the unholy god of all creatures, the baby villager. He makes Barry Allen look slow. And with how small his hitbox is, it will even want to make Superman crawl up back inside mummy. But your Mummy didn't raise a bitch, so you wipe out the orphans and continue to slaughter the village. On your second challenge, you have to destroy the village by breaking a certain number of blocks. And once you have opened up Mother Nature, you will get some sweet goodies as a reward for conquering the village. Overall, this is a really fun mod to play with, and I'd love to see something like this on a smaller scale implemented into vanilla Minecraft. Some of the items you get from winning the raid is pretty good in my opinion as the most annoying part of doing this is breaking all the blocks. And you know what can help you nuke your village off the map? The TNT head cannon. For the TNT head cannon, all you need are these items and a crafting table. Whack them in the crafting table in this order, and wham bam thank you ma'am, you can now commit war crimes on a village with ease. Or you can become a walking meat factory and just go unalive animal. This could be a fun little mod to play on servers with friends, but it isn't client side, so the server needs to have it installed. Or if you just like destroying things, this is the perfect mod for you. For the cannon to work properly, you have to have TNT in your hotbar or in your inventory. So make sure you load up on stacks of TNT first. This is ships. Ships will spawn boats in your oceans that are inhabited by pillagers. They occupy the boat and the sea and they aren't afraid to catch you and shoot an arrow right up your dunghole portal. Once you conquer the sea by murdering the tiny boat pillagers, you can advance by attacking the big boat pillagers, which you may end up with an arrow in the eye if you aren't careful. But once you conquer the ship, there are some great loot and treasure maps to find in here so you can become the king of the pirates. These ships can spawn in groups and yes, pillagers will walk the plank to get to the baby boats to make an army to attack you with, which looks funny when you boat around long enough to have a league of boats following you around. This is a great mod that adds more to do with the ocean and adds more loot and lore to your world. But what is the best way to protect yourself against the boat pillagers? The alley is cute looking and helps bring you items, but the battle alley is a force not to be reckoned with. This mod adds in six new alleys with new items, and let me tell you, these bad boys go goblin mode when a mob comes within a distance of 15 goats of them. The bell and the sword alley get up close and personal to shank and donk enemy mobs on the head until death. The crossbow alley will keep its distance and turn any enemy into a kebab. There is also a shield alley who protects you and an ally that carries a book. There is also the Amethyst allies, so you can have baby Thanos to protect you. And there is also allies in a chest, which my boy does not look happy about. Just look at those eyebrows. You can choose what ally you want in a chest, but I think the crossbow ally best suits in a chest, as he pops in and out like a trapdoor spider. Now, for the ultimate question. Can an army of allies beat a warden? As you can see, they teamed up like fire ants and turned the warden into their personal bitch. 10 out of 10, good ant army to have a security. Now along with the ally comes a new type of enemy. Yes, the Vex now comes with the same weapons as the allies do. And these things just look like they found out the world is flat. Be prepared when you see these guys, as the Sword Vex does the same amount of damage as my dad after three beers. But his weakness is water, so just take him into the lake and slap him to death. And these Vexes will knock you back harder than Mike Tyson punching a child. Some Olympic level slapping. Wandering around your world, you will find an alley home where you can be protected by a personal little army. The inside is filled with allies with shields for great defense. But there is a little secret with these guys. When you break the shield, they whip out a larger than average sword to hurt anyone nearby. Oh, I bet you're wondering. 
What is this little totem? Well, when I click it, it releases a little horde of allies to protect me. There are two of these totems, and they both have cooldown timers, so you can't go and spam them. And lastly, if you place down a note block next to a villager, you get a new ally creeper trader who is ready to riz you up. Just look at the mustache, Ibrea. And he has many trades to help advance your ally army. And if you slap a wandering trader, an ally in a chest will spawn to unleash hell on you for the sins you have committed. So be prepared to fight a ghost in a box when you show the wandering trader what happens when you step out of line. Overhauled Villagers is the perfect mod that everyone needs for their world. This is what a vanilla village should look like. Hope you're taking notes, Mojang. This improves all vanilla villages and also adds in villages to any biome that did not have a village. And I must say, how cool does this jungle treehouse village look? The quality of life in your world with this mod will make you want to explore a lot more, as seeing a new village spawn in various biomes and terrains is an amazing sight to see. And I mean, who doesn't want a mushroom village in their world? They look so damn cool. You have to give props to the creator on this pack. The designs and attention to detail in each village is just unreal. And I would love to see some of these village designs in vanilla Minecraft. Don't you hate having to track down villagers to trade with them? Well, the future is now, and we now have a self-serve checkout with the villager trading post. This adds in a brand new table that you can trade with without the need of a villager being around. Simply make the table and have a villager free so he can connect himself to the table and bam! No longer does the villager need to be near it and you can trade with it at any time. There is also a cool animation with the emerald on it. And you can even trade through the ranks just like with a normal villager. So nothing changes and you no longer have to run around trying to find the villager for the trades you want. Now let's head up into the sky and tickle God's toes. Sky villagers adds in floating island villages. These villages are designed a lot better than anything I could make. With plenty of loot, a place to call home and for some easy emerald finds, you can easily move out of your parents' house and commit Grand Larson to make one of these floating paradises your base to live in. No pillagers will bother you up here. The size and design of these islands are super cool and spawn randomly throughout your world. How cool would these be for an Elytra base? But when you ascend down to the overworld, you notice the professor left a bottle of Chemical X with you. Not knowing what it does, you toss it at this lowly Enderman because it has no friends. After waiting a few seconds, the Enderman turns into the most unholy creature known as your sister. Or in this case, a mutant Beast. Muted Beast is a mod we all wanted to play as a kid, giving you five new mob variants that are super hard to kill. These beasts are Muted Zombies, Mutant Creeper, Mutant Enderman, Mutant Spider, and the Muted Skeleton. The Mutant Enderman is not for the faint of heart. He will suck you in and clap your cheeks to launch you up like a hot air balloon. And when you don't die, he will let out a huge scream of anger to scare you. This gives me the same vibes as Goku when Beerus tries to kill him. He can also pull a Doctor Strange and multiply to stay hidden until you hit the right one. And when getting hit, you will sometimes get random effect of nausea and darkness. Once you defeat him, he will suck you in and let out mini bombs for you to try to escape from. The Mutant Creeper is no joke. Once it locks eyes, this four-legged giant spider will chase you and jump up to give God a high five before coming down to turn you into mincemeat. It does an explosive ground pound, which can cause some damage. So I'd stand clear of this one. But just when you think a body of water can keep you safe, the daddy creeper will shoot a load of his kids at your face to assert dominance and keep you fearing for your life as the creeper minions also explode but you've come equipped with some good armor and managed to defeat the daddy creeper in a last attempt to at defense it will suck you in and turn into a nuke and unalive you but unlike the creeper you can respawn and come back to steal its eggs. The mutant skeleton is probably the weakest on the list. All he does is jump around and shoot three arrows at you. These arrows do contain poison, but you're a big boy who drinks milk, so you are safe. If you get in the personal space of a skeleton, it will give you a left-right good night and punch you away. But don't be scared to get in there and punch it again. Once this skeleton is finished, it just explodes and leaves skeleton remains. Let's see that again in slow motion. So once defeated, you can find his head and give it a victory teabag, just like the good old days. But you know who doesn't like being teabagged? The mutant zombie is the Hulk's wimpy cousin. When he is scared, he summons zombie brothers to die in the sunlight and starts giving the ground a pound. Man, I wish I was the ground. Letting off big shock waves and doing some serious damage. When given enough damage, he has a little death animation, but he comes back to life. And he is even angrier. So when you get too close, he will throw you in the air like a tennis ball and jump up only to smash you straight back down to the ground, which can do some damage. And when he is down, make sure Sure it's dead before you run up and teabag him, as sniffing your booty may resurrect him. The mutant spider is your average size Australian spider, and we will call him Larry. Larry is a friendly fella who won't- Oh my god, Larry, what are you doing? When Larry is provoked, he likes to launch himself at high speeds and smack you with his butt while laying web to slow you down. 
This is probably the hardest to beat, but if you are brave enough and have enough practice, you can also tame and ride one of these guys around your world. And I'd recommend keeping your pigs away from these guys. But this mod isn't all doom and gloom. We also have muted snow golems to help protect you from all the dangers. He is the iron golem's older brother, and he is here to protect. He leaves a snow trail so you don't lose him, and he launches big old ice cubes at any nearby threat to protect you at all costs. You also get cool items from the beast, such as enderman's hands. You can now pick up grass blocks to throw around in case you don't have any weapons, or you can use to stack blocks from a distance. You can also have hours of fun donking villagers on the head. You can also get a full body of skeleton armor, which gives off a nice little speed and jump boost, and it looks pretty damn cool, and you feel like Flash Gordon. There is also Hulk's hammer, so you can go around hammering villagers and mobs to show them who is boss. And we have the Creeper Shard, and the Creeper Shard gives us a POV of what your toilet sees after eating Taco Bell. It causes maximum destruction, and makes farming mob food or defeating mobs much easier. This mod will blow your mind. Let me show you. Mr. Crayfish's gun mod adds in a variety of guns to Minecraft, making rabbit hunting season a lot more fun. You can get a mini gun so you can easily take out the local kittens and school kids while walking through the town. A bazooka so you can easily fight the town security guard or send a group of orphans to meet their parents. The shotgun will come in handy for any villager that looks at you funny after you've had a bad day. And the grenade launcher for when you need to teach the kids a lesson. These are just some of the guns that get added to the game and these could be really fun for survival and zombie apocalypse maps. Even just walking around your world of a night Time makes it easier when unaliving hostile mobs so you don't have to get close to them anymore. And these guns are pretty powerful and useful against high health mobs. Just don't get outsmarted by the kid who is Batman's son. You can craft any of these guns with the crafting station and even add dice to them to make them any colour you like. There is also attachments for each gun to suit any type of mission you are doing. These next two mods are similar, so we are going to look at them together. These mods are Easy Magic and Easy Anvils. Let's start off with Easy Anvils. Easy Anvils now lets you set your items on anvils for some great decoration and makes it easy to set up items ready to enchant later. You can also use custom fonts and colours on all your weapons, armour and name tags. And these look great. Let me tell you, they make you feel more alive. You can now also rename name tags without the use of anvils and no longer waste levels trying to name your pets. This should really be a vanilla feature. The only downfall is when giving coloured names to mobs. The upside down Australian effect does not work on them. Now for easy magic. Install this mod if you want to win the school science fair as it shows your lapis and weapons floating around the enchantment table. And I just love the look of this as it makes your enchantment rooms feel like you're enchanting with magic. And your weapons will hide in the book and only appear when you come to the table. Which is a great little feature when left in the enchantment table. With this mod you can also re-roll enchants. So if you get a bad enchantment you can keep rolling until you get the enchantment of your choice. Choice. Another cool feature is you can attach hoppers to your tables and they will fill up your lapis and your weapons when they get taken out So you never have to worry about forgetting lapis again Do you like pain and suffering or just want to show off to the person you have a crush on? Well chaos mod is the perfect mod for you This mod has a 30 second timer which will trigger an event that will either try to kill you or make your life a bit harder Some of these events include meteor showers which looks like a typical day in the MCU Big old sinkholes forming around you which the earth likes because they are deep Teleporting you in the sky so you can skydive without a parachute blocks can explode when you mine them it can rain arrows but you can hide undercover for this one or you can walk around on fire and set fire to everything you touch some of the less scary ones are Stephen Hawking vision with the monitor downgrade all mobs will turn upside down for dramatic effect you can get super speed You get death vision, so looking at mobs will alt F for them. And you can get blurry vision, which is actually hard to see with. These are just a glimpse of some of the events you can get with this mod. There are 120 events inside this mod. You can adjust the timer to suit your own needs so it's shorter or longer between events. But overall, this is a great mod with heaps of fun challenging aspects to it. Could you beat Minecraft when using this? The better nether mod is the best and only mod you need for the nether. You teleport to the nether and you are greeted with this magnificent view. This mod adds in brand new biomes with heaps of new features and blocks. New structures that come with a lot of loot to steal. New building blocks, decorations, food and recipes. And yeah. Yes, you can now sit at chairs and tables while you're eating your meals. There is plenty of new mobs to encounter, and they can be nightmare fuel, but there is also some cute ones. And the best thing about this mod is there's also now respawn statues, which you can activate with glowstone. This is a great all-round mod, but I think some things can be toned down a little bit. Kicking your nana. I mean, kicking off the list, we got End Remastered. This mod will make going to the end an adventure. 
By adding in quests to reach the end, you now get new castle structures, home by pillagers, and a new witch's hut. Inside the castle is plenty of loot and a new portal room, but hold it right there. You can't use Eyes of Enders on these portals. There are 16 new Eyes of Ender for you to find while beating certain mobs, which you need your big boy pants for. They also spawn in certain structures that you can find spawning around your world, and you can also craft certain eyes. Once you get enough, you can head to the stronghold, and the new stronghold is now a puzzle to work your way through to find the end portal. And coming into the new stronghold looks absolutely beautiful. There is also new ore for armors and weapons for a little a reward for all the hard work of getting to the end. Just keep in mind, I recorded this on 1.16.5. Any of the newer versions do not have the structures in them anymore. Iron golems are pretty bland. So I present to you the villager brute. And my god, look at the size of his nose. It's so big, it has its own gravitational pull. Surprised there isn't a moon floating around it. I bet he could smell what the rock is cooking. I'd be moving this slow if I had a sniffer the size of Shaq on my face. But enough about that. He is the villager protector. And if you slap a child, he will use his peak male performance body to alive you and he won't hold back on any mobs and is willing to sacrifice himself for the greater good he also drops iron and apples when he gets deleted from your world but squidward is like a regular human and needs sleep too and will squeeze himself onto a bed for a good night rest ready to sniff out trouble for the next day throw ability is a great mod for when you want to hunt like a caveman you now get a nice little throwing animation and you can even use items like normal when throwing them makes throwing items like ender pearls more satisfying or even throwing mummy's light up toy underwater looks very graceful the animations are smooth and great and you can even build a house by throwing blocks in positions instead of placing them like a peasant. You can even throw arrows without a bow and still harm mobs. This should just be a normal vanilla feature. I need my arrows to be more useful. Do your hands get sore when holding torches? Mage Flame lets you summon a flying magical flame to follow you around so you no longer have to place torches like a peasant. You can summon these flames by crafting scrolls using vanilla ingredients, which is super simple and super easy to do. Mage Flame is a dynamic light source, so it lights the area around you no matter where you are. There are four levels of torches you can use level 1 being the lowest light source and level 4 being the highest light source. And just how cool does a level 4 torch with wings look? These torches have feelings and will get deleted from your world if you smack them enough. And you can only spawn one at a time so don't try and spawn two because the other will go and meet your grandparents. Minecraft needs some more chest variety. And here are a few chests with some cool designs. But come here and listen to me. These are no ordinary chests. As you will see, they contain a hidden secret that makes them a menace to society. Now, you will be wandering through your world and notice one of these mysterious chests. You open it and find some sweet goodies inside. Just like going to grandma's house. But then you see another. And when you open it, it turns into... Sorry, I was in creative mode. But when you open another, it turns into a Steve killing chest trying to eat your meaty insides. These chests will jump higher than LeBron, and their only mission is to turn you into a hashtag. So if you come across one of these monsters, you better be ready like Mike Tyson to fight like a butterfly and sting likes when I pee. Each biome will home a different style of chests, with there even being styles from the nether and the end, so it can fit in with any build you have made. And if you are brave enough, you can also tame the zombie chest, and it will send any mob that touches you to meet Jesus. You can tame these by finding a special key in one of the chests randomly throughout your world, so you can make a nice little army of chests and turn yourself into a portable apocalypse to attack a whole village because Thanos was right, and we don't have enough resources. Each time Minecraft has a mob vote, there is always one mob we all wanted that didn't make the cut. We got robbed of my copper boy. <laughs> well, with friends and foes, we get back all the forgotten mobs, both hostile and friendly, to make our world a better or a worse place. Let's start off with the hostile mobs, which are the Isolager, the Illusioner, and the Wildfire. Each mob comes with their own little structure, and the Isolager spawns in the Snowy Tiger biome. If you break into a tome, he will run away and try to freeze you to death. So get him far away enough, and you got yourself a free house with some pet goats. The Illusioner spawns in a shack in the tiger biome, and when you slap this boy with your pimp hand, he will go full Dr. Fate and multiply and act like a big bully. But after slapping the fakes, you will eventually slap the real one, and when you unalive him, you show no mercy to his doggos. The yellow boy with the rap name Wildfire has no friends in his nether citadel fortress. This citadel spawns four ruined portals, so you have an easy way back when you defeat Wildfire. The more you hit him, the more it shows his true colors of being a noodle boy. And the more damage he takes, the more shield he loses, until he's no longer Satan's bitch. And underneath his room, it's full of minions who are trying to summon the Wither. So if you manage to get lucky enough to get three Wither Skulls, you can be a man and summon the Wither in the Nether. Back in the overworld, there is also a cool new villager beekeeper who has some handy trade. But don't slap him like I did. It won't give you cheaper prices. But he does trade some cool stuff. So if anything, give him a cuddle and you might get some cheaper prices. And he also adds in beehives to every wood type in Minecraft. So if you want to make a beehive in the Nether, now you can. 
The copper golem is so damn cute. Look how excited he gets when he finds a copper button to play with. Such a simp for buttons. I am still salty that we missed out on this little cute boy. The mauler is here and ready to hurt the lives of farmers. He shows no mercy for anyone who is a chicken. So you better run away from this guy. He thrives on fear and can easily make any chicken slaughter machine. The Moo Bloom is here, giving life to the mushroom biome. And he can even milk it like a good boy and drink its insides right in front of him. Yes, watch me drink your inside. And lastly, we got the Glare, the most useless mob out of them all. He just looks like Peter Griffin in a mask and floats around getting in the way. The ancient city has given us blue balls with having a portal that does not do anything. But with the deeper, darker mod, we finally get to explore a new dimension through the Warden Portal. To activate this portal, all you need to do is send the Warden to meet Jesus, and you will obtain the Warden's Heart, which you can use to activate the portal once it's all clear from Skulk. When you enter, you will be greeted by a new dimension filled with plenty of new items. The other side, Deeplands Biome, is a biome filled with many new mobs, one being the Phantom the most annoying mob in the game. So like my toe fungus, I'd try to avoid this biome. The other mob being a centipede, which may look cute, but it's not afraid to hurt you when you slap it. But it's fairly weak, so you'll have no problem beating it. You also have this absolute nightmare fuel looking mob called the Stalker, and this thing is as scary looking as your sister. And while you swing your rusty prison shank at it, it releases little centipede babies that will try unsubscribe you from life. So bring some extra food to this battleground. There is also a few more mobs with some surprises, which I'll let you stumble across and find out the effects for yourself. You can also find overworld ores down here, such as diamond, emeralds, iron, and more. So you don't have to worry about getting too low on diamonds in your area anymore. There is also an echoing forest biome. This biome has some new trees, glowing blocks, and just looks so damn cool to walk through. And the last biome is the overcast column. This is the wasteland of this dimension. This biome has geysers scattered throughout it. And when you walk on them, it will yeet you into the air and give you feather falling for a few seconds to get down to the ground safely. But you will take damage whenever you walk on them. You can travel between these biomes through the rivers, which with the new echo wood boat and traveling in the water sets off shriekers, which looks so damn cool. There is also an ancient temple structure, but before entering it, I'd become a man and get some new warden armor, which consists of a helmet, chest plate, leggings, and boots. These add in an effect and some good defense because once you're down the bottom of the temple, there is a chance you will summon the warden. And being in a confined space with the warden is not a fun time. There is also a new skulk smite enchantment and plenty of new blocks and items added into this mod. I would really love to see this mod integrated into a future Minecraft update. Steve has grown some fingers and can now pick up and carry certain items with the carry-on mod. No longer do you have to break items and put them in your inventory to transport them. You can just pick them up and walk around with them and place them anywhere you want. So if you see a villager family having fun, you can pick up a child and drop it into the ravine. And when the dad is upset, drop him into the ravine as well. You can even pick up iron golems to use as a surprise attack by dropping them into the base of a few enemies. And if you're quick enough, you can pick up creepers before they explode and put them down in a safe location. This mod works for many mobs and blocks to make things like transporting chests, furnaces, and any other block easier to move. And makes putting villages in your iron farm super simple as well. Oh look, another sleeping mod. Comforts adds in a new sleeping bag so you can go camping with your mates. All you need to craft a sleeping bag is three pieces of wool and boom, you got yourself a sleeping bag. You can place these down anywhere to sleep your troubles away. Once you wake up from your slumber, you automatically pick up the sleeping bag and it can be on your jolly way. It also works like beds, so when mobs are nearby, sleeping is vaulted. So be sure to sleep in a safe environment. Do you load items into your furnace like this? Well, stop being an absolute peasant and start utilizing your time. Fast Entity Transfer lets you place items in the furnace, smoker, and blast furnace without opening a UI. Now, all you do is run up and whack it in without wasting your time. Your parents don't know this secret, but it's just as easy to pull out. Just click like you're about to break it, and the item you inserted will be in your hand ready to use. A nifty little mod for you to save time so you could break your own speedrun record. The bygone nether mod adds in three new structures to the nether. The first being Piglin Manor, a greatly designed house which is filled with mobs and some loot inside. It also gives the piglins a little makeover, with a hoglin skull being carried by some piglins and a piglin riding a wither skeleton horse. Unfortunately, they do not drop a hoglin skull for you to wear as back bling. The next structure is the Citadel, located in the Warped Forest. 
It is a small structure home by Enderman and some great loot and a fresh new item. The Endermen get a brand new skin, making them look a bit more menacing when you find them and more scary when chasing you. There is also a new warped ender eye. When you throw it, this eye will teleport you and give you feather falling for a short period of time. So you can throw this anywhere and not break an ankle when you land. The last structure is the catacombs, which spawns in soul sand valleys and looks like the wither. And in each wither head is a room filled with mobs and some loot. And I would be ready with a suit of armor when exploring this. There is wither skeletons with new designs, a scary glowing skeleton, who looks menacing when standing in lava, or this with a skeleton who looks like he's lost a few too many fights. The Nether Fortress has also got a new makeover, making it look a lot better like the piglins have built it themselves, and Bastion Remnants also now spawn in all biomes. There is also a new music disc, new armor, and some more items that can be used around your Minecraft world. These are normal doors in Minecraft, and just like your mother overreacting, these are dramatic doors, which are three blocks high. Dramatic doors are perfect for bringing your horse into your house without hitting your noggin on the way in so he can sleep peacefully in your bed but if you lose a staring contest to an enderman make sure you close your door since they can now enter your home and watch you sleep these doors are also super useful for nether portals since they now cover the whole face of a standard portal dramatic doors look super great and works for all minecraft doors so you can have a dramatic door to suit any style build you want and it also keeps standard doors in the game so you can have a choice between normal and dramatic doors do you support eating eagle with the rumbling, well, this is the perfect mod for you. Yellow Bros Extras gives you the power to create your own rumbling. You start out with a normal creeper with a flower on its head, but this creeper has one mission. It will hunt down anything with a heartbeat and send it to the recycle bin when it explodes. And when it explodes, it can multiply the more creepers. There is also a baby flying creeper that is the floating Grim Reaper. You also get this cube looking guy, which can let out a mean explosion, making no one safe. And I mean no one is safe. Not even the people in their own homes. Meanwhile, at the Crusty Crab. There is also this spider looking creeper and look how he walks. <laughs> But he is also a walking nuke, so be careful of him. There is also a yellow creeper with a cannon, who can attack you from a distance, spawning in creepers with the explosions for maximum nightmare fuel. And one of the worst ones is the purple creeper, who just like Lana Rhodes will suck anything in towards it and create an almighty explosion. Oh, and if you want to know how powerful these guys are, look how quickly they alt F for the water. But there is one champion who can beat them. He is called the Defender. And he looks like Ash Ketchum just trying to catch them all. And my guy is just a straight up menace. He don't take no shit and will destroy anything who tries to attack him. And as you can see, he gets his moves from Super Smash Bros. There isn't much this guy can't do. He even Naruto runs because he is cool. You can also make these guys fight each other for a good show. And sometimes they will turn to Beyblades. They even have a move when they die which has no boundaries and will definitely friendly fire a horse if it's in the way. But when he is out of breath, he doesn't die like a champion. He just rage quits like my 10 year old brother, which I had a good laugh when I seen. The better end mod is the ultimate end mod, adding in heaps of brand new biomes, structures, blocks, armor, tools, and entities. And these biomes are just a sight to walk around and listen to the ambient sounds and admire how beautiful Minecraft can be. They also interact very well with the end cities, which is a great touch. Some of the new biomes also have underground cave systems in them, and I'd bring your Scooby gear to explore these ones. You will also notice fighting the Ender Dragon, the island has a little makeover too. The new mobs are super cute, with some brand new land mobs and brand new water mobs. And one of the coolest features to this mod is the altar portals. These spawn randomly around the end, and they can be activated with eternal crystals and lead you straight back to the overworld. So no more going back to Dragon Island to get to the overworld. These are just so more convenient to travel to and from the end. This little guy here is called Sprout. Well, he's actually a little elephant. And he is way cuter than the person you last took out on a date. You no longer need villagers to grow crops, so you can smack them away. Sprout is a cute little elephant that spawns in your world and can be tamed with peanuts found in meadows. Once tamed, he will go suck up some water with his trunk and come spray it all over your crops. The boys will understand what this is like and your crops will grow a lot faster. So you can make an army of cute sprouts and speed grow your crops so you never run out of food. There is also flower boxes you can use to combine flower colors together and make custom color flowers. There is also a new mob for the nether called the bouncy bug. But when I try spawn them in, it bounces my game to the shadow realm and I get this message. So unfortunately, I can't show you this mob, but definitely check out this great mod for yourself 
as it's a must-have in your world. Do you want to show your mum how much of a toughie you are? Well, now you can, with Dungeon Difficulty. This mod will adjust the health and loot of all mobs in your world. Mobs spawning around world spawn will be normal mobs, but once you move further away and into different biomes, mobs will get stronger depending on the biome they spawn in and what dimension they spawn in. I'm using a client-side mod called Mob Plax to show off the health of each mob. And as you can see, mobs can also vary in health no matter where they are, so they could spawn stronger or weaker. The skeletons in the nether get a bit of a buff, and other nether mobs have more health too but the worst are in the end the dragon health varies a bit but endermen get a huge health buff and still look like skinny noodle just look at the health of them now you're in for a bad time in the end dimension now and can we just look at how much health the warden has in the end he is the leader of the salty splatoon down here and normal mobs are rather buffed down here too overall this mod will make you become more strategic in your world as you won't just fight any new mob now and the stronger the mob is the better the loot will be so i reckon it's worth the fight incendium gives the nether the perfect overhaul mojang you should pull out your notepad first you know Notice the world height is increased to the size of your mum for maximum room. Oh, you want some whipped cream with those pancakes? There is now new biomes, and each biome includes many new blocks to decorate the trash can I call a house. And if that isn't enough for you, let's put the cherry on top. There is now brand new structures spawning all throughout the nether, and some of these structures will go down as the biggest natural generated structures but your mum already took that title. But in all seriousness, this mod adds in some unreal structures, and as usual, there is always loot to find inside. And combined with new world height and new biomes makes this one of my favorite nether mods. The piglins also get their own little nether village, which is a structure that fits into the nether perfectly. Mrs. Puff just gave you your boat license. So now you can install Auto Mobility. Auto Mobility adds in cars to your world so you can hit and run villages now. These cars are designed super well and drive and handle great and are super fun to drift around in. There are ramps so you can take any car uphill and there is also speed boost pads so you can smack into villages at full force. You also get a trolley which you can drive around and drift in and is great fun for running over cats and villages. And for you farmers out there, you can now get a tractor. And the number one rule with the tractor is, first I plow my land, then I plow your mum. There are some great cars you can make with this mod to suit any style you like. And you can even get lots of attachments for each car, which looks great. And you can even customize your car to be a four-wheel drive or a race car. And you can even choose what size engine goes into your vehicle to suit the style you need. Just look at how good and useful these attachments are. Say goodbye to water streams to transport items in your item sorters. Simple copper pipes gives a new sleek transport system for items in your world. These pipes come in copper, and just like normal copper, it oxidizes over time and changes color. Unless you rub some wax on your pipe, then it stays the same color. The pipe will open at both ends, and if you block it off with any block, items just keep flowing down the pipe until they reach their final destination. And they will go up, down, left, or right. One of the best features is when you have water at the end of the pipe. It sucks up the water and turns it into a sprinkler over your crops. So you no longer need a water block in the middle making your builds look ugly. And you can plant sugarcane anywhere your mind can think of. Now, if you give a dispenser a long snout, it will shoot out the items a longer distance, but the items will go in any random direction. The boys will understand the pain with this. You can also make glowing pipes in many different colors, and these look so damn cool. Besides using these pipes for a rave, they can also be used for cool designs and useful to see where items are getting stuck. And you can make random designs to add to your builds. There is also a little corner pipe to connect the pipes and make them look a bit neater when bending your pipes around corners. A system like this could be a great addition to hoppers in a future Minecraft update. Don't you hate it when you kidnap a villager and a piece of grass foils your getaway plan because your stupid boat can't go up? Well, jumping boats patches that and makes it so you can jump up ledges. You can now easily escape with your villager without getting stopped again. You can't jump a full block, but you can jump high enough so that if you play stairs, you can never get stopped again. With the jumping ability, you can also travel a bit faster, which is handy. This is probably one of the most useful mods I've ever seen in my life. Nothing worse than throwing an ender pearl and your horse don't come with it because he is scared of magic. So we installed mounted pearls to make our horse a little wizard and teleport with us with ender pearls. Now every time you throw an ender pearl, your horse or whatever animal you are riding will teleport with you. So you no longer leave behind your loved ones and can travel the world together. Until they die getting hit by a skeleton, then you have to teleport the ender pearls by yourself. Oh boy, vegans, eat your heart out. This one is for you. No longer will we be attacking pigs with shanks to get food. Now we can just use fireworks to send them to space where they'll explode and dropped cooked pork chops. Less work for me and less painful for the bacon boy. This is a funny mod for a great time as long as you've got fireworks you can keep exploding pigs. And you can even blow up the babies so they think they get a fun ride before they die. But wait, 
There is more. If you hold TNT in your offhand, you can fly the pig up and it will explode too. Which this could be a great way to mine up if you're stuck in a cave with an army of your mum. Because you can go rapid fire on the oinkers and free up a hole in the roof. Just don't go too crazy, as I blew up a few too many babies and my game crashed. So uh, yeah, moving on. Supplementaries adds in quality of life to your world by adding in a heap of new decoration blocks and fun items. First up, you can spend your days acting like Bart Simpson with a slingshot and it's perfect for decorating a house from a distance. Or just have some fun shooting it as the animations look wicked with it. Spice up your life with some brand new paintings of all sorts of designs. You can finally hang up a painting on your house that is good enough to make Picasso jealous. And I love how big some of these paintings are. You can now have doormats in your home to welcome guests in your own special way. There is even little booby traps for you to prank your friends with. <laughs> He said booby. There is now netherite trap doors and house doors, and there's even different style presents for you to put items in and write your mate's name on. And for all you smart people out there, there are some new redstone contraptions. I'm not smart enough to figure them out, but here are what these three blocks look like. You can now get custom signs that look like arrows to point you in the right direction. These can be placed on fences, but for some reason my game glitched out and made the fences disappear when I placed them. So they look like they are floating. Candles on sticks can be placed in a pile to make different styles to suit your theme, and they can even be hung from a roof. And if you hoard potions, you can now store them in big old jars to use later, which is a great little addition. Overall, this is a jam-packed mod with so many new features I didn't cover, and I'd highly recommend checking this out for yourself. I'd also recommend checking out the YouTube recommended video. YouTube knows what you like, so you won't be disappointed. And I'll see you legends over there. But one mod that is complete is better combat. And just like a Pokemon going through levels, it adds new fighting mechanics, including four new attacks for swords and an axe. With the sword, you can now do a right swish a left swish, and a pokey stab using all your might. And the player animations are just great. With the axe, you only get swish motions, and it's a bit slow. But if you wield two of these weapons in each hand, start tapping the trigger. You will alternate between the sword and the axe and bring fear to the eyes of your enemies as you slay them. But if you are a true martial artist, you can also roll around using combat rolls, and it works with combat movements so well. You can now do a dodge roll to avoid your enemies or roll into their attack, whatever floats your boat. Just don't roll off the edge, as you're not a ninja and you'll probably break a leg. There is no worse feeling than accidentally hitting your doggo mid-fight. Friendly fire takes away the stress of fighting alongside your companion so you never hit your dog again. He is immune to the meat stick wax and will love you forever for it. He will also no longer take damage by bow and arrow either. This should just be a part of vanilla Minecraft. But if you want to reserve your own spot down in Satan land, you can crouch and you will still hit your doggo, you absolute monster. Let's make your world come more alive with items to mobs. This mod turns a couple of game items to mobs that will drop that item when they are eliminated. First up, we've got the cauldron that became thick enough that we could ride it this portable swimming pool is a great way to travel around and he just looks so damn cute just don't let iron golems near them they hate cute things Next, we got the Totem of Undying. This golden villager floats around and is harmless and a bit tricky to kill. But if you manage to kill it, you'll get a free totem. Did someone say KFC? The furnace is now a walking fast food pet. All you gotta do is put some coal inside him and he gets a cute little face. And then whack your food of choice in there and he spits it out instantly for a quick snack so you never go hungry again. Once his coal runs out, he stops moving, but put another piece in it and he's good to go. Oh, and he just looks so damn cute and he also fights for you to protect you. The perfect companion. There is annoying little ants that drop shears when you kill them. They also attack, but they're easily defeated. Iron golems also don't like them. This little guy is what spawns on your bedroom floor after what you did last summer. This spawn of Satan is hostile and swims around, only causing pain. He doesn't need to touch you, just get close enough to him and you will start feeling the ouchies. This thing just looks so creepy moving around. Next, we got the Firefox, not to be confused with the web browser. He is consistently on fire and burns everything around it, but don't slap it, otherwise it will try to turn you into a Thanksgiving turkey. If you manage to kill this guy, he drops blaze rods, so you don't have to go to the nether anymore. There is also an annoying little redstone bug like endermite and he zooms around so it's kind of hard to hit it but it doesn't do much damage. So if you've got your pet furnace around he will help you save the day. And lastly there's a nether quartz crab that spawns in soul sand valley. He is harmless and he always looks like someone kicked his dog. This is a great little mod to use and if you manage to kill any of these animals they do drop items that can help you out in your world. Do you want a way to display your epic achievement you've made in your world? Advancement trophies is the perfect way to display your hard work you've done in your world. You can get these trophies in iron, gold, 
gold, diamond, emerald, and netherite. And these trophies display the name of the advancement and the logo of the advancement. This is also compatible with other mods and custom advancements, so you can showcase everything you've done in your world. There is a trophy recycler, for if you don't want your trophy anymore, you can burn it down and get some ore out of it for some more useful things. You can upgrade the trophies by getting a block of ore and putting it in the trophy upgrade table, just so you can flex a little bit more with your netherite trophy. The only downfall to this mod is you have to have the trophy in your inventory for the advancement to stick to it. It would be better if you could pick the advancement for each trophy, but other than that, it's a great decoration mod. If you are enjoying the video so far, smash the sub button or I'll drop kick your nana. Brock and Sindri's Trinkets is a mod that gives you two new mobs and some new enchantments which are super fun to use. To summon these two magicians, all you need is the dwarfing table and three gold blocks around it. Brock is a level 1 enchanter, and Sindri is a level 2 enchanter. We kick Brock to the curb and only use Sindri. All you need to do is throw down a sword or an axe and a rune of your choice. Once he does some magic, he will throw the weapon back and you can now have some fun. There are five different runes, each with different powers and the animations look super cool as well. One will freeze the mob when the weapon is yeeted at them and sticks to them until they've been unalived. Super useful for a mob that is chasing you and you just want a second to breathe or to murder it. Or if you just want to have a certain mob as a statue in your city. We can summon the lightning of Zeus when he direct hits his targets, which looks cool and can be useful for getting charged creepers. This is probably my favorite one of the lot. You can do your own flame breathing styles to donk villagers on the head and set them on fire for maximum torture. And this is just super useful for cooking up pigs and cows. Let's turn the world to ice with ice breathing. When this item hits the ground, it will turn a radius of blocks into ice blocks to prevent global warming. You can feel like Thor and have your weapon returned to you after being thrown. So if you are skilled enough to make a clean double shot on some villagers, click the throw button again and your weapon will return to you, so you never have to get close to hostile mobs again. Overall, this is a fun little mod, which could be cool for some PvP game mode, or if you just like torturing villagers. This is you, plain, boring, and not fun to be around. And this is the guy she told you not to worry about. Better Villagers is a mod I've showcased before, but it has since had some upgrades to it, and it's just too good not to show off. The villagers have gotten their own engineering degrees from Elon Musk, and have designed their own utopias. Currently, each four out of the five villages have gotten an overhaul bigger than Kendall Jenner. The effort and attention to detail gone into this mod is insane, and every village has its own unique style with heaps of loot to find. I love the addition of the little villager markets and animal farms. And the addition of the town centerpiece is great. Makes finding villages more rewarding as they look more alive. They also come with some fun secrets too. The creators of this mod should be proud of themselves for how good this looks. They are planning on adding an overhaul tiger village in the future, and this mod is also compatible with many other villager mods. If you suck at building houses like myself, now you can come to a village and pick the perfect house for you to live in. All you gotta do is unalive the occupants. Easy as that. The graveyard will add some lore to Minecraft, but most importantly, will add brand new structures, item, mobs, and bosses to your world. The effort gone into these builds is insane, and these graveyards can spawn in many different sizes, and no biome is left out. Inside each structure, there is some new decoration items, which look great and rather freaky. They also include heaps of loot, so they're well worth exploring. Some structures, like the crypt, are great to explore underground and have some pillagers dressed up like magicians which can be easily defeated. There is also brand new coffins which act as chests just in case you wanted to store your dead friend's belongings in here. This mod also adds in a heap of new mobs and I imagine this is what your mum looks like without makeup. Just look at how terrifying they look. But these aren't the worst mobs. If you explore the sky you will come across Death Island. Landing on this island you will be greeted by the Lich. This is your mum's final form and it's terrifying. It will spawn in minions to send you to the Shadow Realm but if you manage to beat them and when you try to get close to the corrupt champion it will shoot shoot dead souls at you and launch you off Death Island, where you will suffer the same fate as the Titanic. Overall, this mod is insane with how much new content it can bring to Minecraft. Dragon Enchants adds in 10 new vanilla friendly enchantments, and I think some of these are the best. Just like normal enchantments, you place them on an anvil just like this. Just like this, and you got yourself a new weapon of mass destruction. End step on a bow is just like an ender eye, and it teleports you anywhere it lands so you no longer have to walk like a peasant. And it's great for sneaking up on mobs, as they'll never know your next move. And it makes it more satisfying when hitting mobs. Detonate makes your arrows explode on impact for a dramatic effect. Wind step on your leggings turns you into the flash, so mobs will never catch you again. Just look how fast you move now. End walker makes you randomly teleport when hit by a projectile, so just like an enderman, arrows are sometimes vaulted. You can also use this 
used to your advantage for running away or when trying to attack. Obliterate on an axe will make mobs explode when they get unalive, which makes you feel like a god. And it looks more professional when unsubscribing the children from life. And the venomous enchant on a sword gives anything it touches the poison effect, so you can watch them slowly fade away just like your bank account. These are just some of the best enchantments, and I'd highly recommend adding this mod to your world for a fun time. The creators did an amazing job with how well these work and how good these animations are. Let's give the sniffer a little makeover with the snowy sniffer mod. But don't be fooled, this isn't a sniffer with snow on it, it's Pablo Escobar's doggo that has escaped and just wants a new friend. And I love how cool these new sniffers looks. To get a layer of Pablo on your sniffer, it needs to be in a snowy biome while it's snowing, and it will land on it and turn it into a snowy sniffer. And look how cute the babies look, but get them to a warm place as they get the shakes from being cold. I love how simple this mod is, and would love to see variants of this mod on other mobs. Are you sick and tired of smacking your melon on trees when exploring? Well, look no further than better trees. As you can see, team trees really paid off and you can easily walk around the forest, jungles and any tree biome in your world. Trees now spawn their leaves at a good height so you can easily ride your horse or camel through without getting KO'd by a tree branch or leaf and it just changes the overall aesthetic of your world, making it look a lot better. Vanilla Refresh adds in some great quality of life improvements that should just be in vanilla Minecraft. Come on Mojang, what are you doing? You can now change the stance of armor stands up to seven times which is great for decoration purposes and you can make it dab and this just makes armor stands feel more alive and you can show off your gear a bit better you can see the health of all entities so now you can make sure if you're brave enough to attack it or not xp will always come to you no matter how far away you are from it so you can feel like goku gathering energy and it just looks so cool having xp fly towards you when you enter a biome you haven't been in before you get a message on screen of the biome you're entering this is great for anyone who keeps track of the biome achievement and beating the end the dragon gives the animation a little upgrade and you can make it so it drops an elytra and this is just a lot more useful than the dragon egg the dragon egg is as useful as the cayenne knife you can also enable dragon eggs to respawn so when you beat the dragon for a second time it will drop an egg and an elytra and one of the most useful add-ons of this mod is being able to place ladders below you so now you can ladder down into caves this is the perfect mod for anyone who sucks and can't mlg bucket to save their life oh you can also load up ender pearls into a lodestone and have it so you can teleport back to a lodestone stone from up to 96 blocks away which is pretty cool there is heaps in this mod and these are just some of the best and i'd recommend checking them out for yourself let's turn the nether from mild spice to extra spicy with nether delight nether delights adds in new food items and decorations to the nether there is hogland meat which can be cooked up in a fry pan but once consumed will get you down with the sickness and give you nausea <laughs> and you feel like Gordon Ramsay when cooking in a fry pan. You can also get a hoglin head as a decoration trophy to hang on your wall or hang up in a piglin bastion as a power move. There is also raw stuffed hoglin which can be cut up using a kniffy and a bowl and you get enough food out of this thing to feed a small village. This mod adds in more food ingredients which you can craft with these recipes and just having more food options in the nether gives it some more life and reason to come down here. Along with these extras there is a sugarcane style plant in the nether which can be used as a food and light source and it's just a great looking design plan. This mod is an add-on to Farmer's Delight, so you need that installed for this mod to work. It's time to enter the matrix with Immersive MC. Immersive MC vaults some GUI screens from your world and makes interacting with tables so much better. Now when you touch a table, which you can right click to place down the items to make what your heart desires. And how goddamn cool does this look? I find the displays work flawlessly and the recipe always faces you. Only downfall to this mod is the recipe book is like John Cena and you can't see it. So unless you know the recipes, you'll have to look them up. Gliders adds in a new way to travel around your world without an elytra. Now you can jump off a cliff or an edge and tap the space bar again to deploy your glider. You will glide down gracefully without taking any damage. It also gives a cool animation, which I love and is how I imagine I'd react when opening a glider. You can also get these gliders in five different styles with all different ore types. Mutant Moor is a mod you can only play if you are strong enough to enter the salty splatoon it adds in three mutant creatures to your world the mutant with the skeleton mutant blaze and the mutant shulker and it also adds in a baby blaze look how cute he is when standing within five feet of these guys they will go full beerus and unleash hell on you which i'd recommend coming with some good armor and some good food the wither skeleton leaps throws fire and swings swords at you while the blaze also gives off a fire animation on your screen which can bring fear into your eyes his shields also defend himself while he shoots fire at you the giant spider shulker turns into a Beyblade which can launch you away. It throws little babies on the ground which can float you up if provoked. It sends out shulker bullets 
and muted shocker bullets, and these will keep following you up into the sky to ensure you get deleted when you come back down. And his hard outer shell makes him a bit harder to defeat. If you manage to defeat these beasts, you can get some cool armor from the skeleton and the blaze, which looks cool and is super handy. And you can also get a shulker turret to guard your villager so you can sit back and be lazy while the golem and shulker turret do your job for you. To make these monsters, all you need is Formula Y or Compound Z and just throw it and watch some magic happen before you need to run for your life. And here are some of the new items that come with the mod so you can have fun with. These mutants are a fun mod to play with and I'd highly recommend downloading it if you want a challenge in your world. Now this mod is like the word Jeff and uses English letters in an illegal way and when I try to pronounce it, my furniture starts floating. Explosiont is a great mod for you noobs like myself who are too lazy to cover up creeper holes, as this mod does the work for you and fills in the holes automatically so you never have to waste your precious dirt blocks again. This mod also works on TNT, so you can commit grand larson on your friend's house and watch it rebuild for a good laugh. This mod does a great job in also filling in chests that explode, so you don't lose items, but just like my Netflix subscription, any nearby mobs will not come back alive. So now you have created an orphan in this village. From what I've tested, there is no size limit to what this mod can fix, but the bigger the hole, the longer it takes to fill back up. So let me play you some elevator music while you watch this big old hole refill itself. Young is back at it again with Young's better nether fortress. He has given the nether fortress a much needed overhaul, making them less boring. They now have a shrine to the nether boss, the wither, which suits the nether so well. There is hidden rooms in here filled with good random loot, making the fight to get in here worth it. And exploring the rest of the fortress is great. It's now designed with three separate levels, making it easy to get attacked by the blaze. And speaking of the blaze, the blaze spawner looks really cool now. The overall look of the nether fortress has gotten a lot better and a lot more enjoyable to explore. And I'd love to see a fortress overhaul in vanilla Minecraft. And as usual, the time and effort Young puts into his mods really shows off. Better Animations Collection is a great little mod to improve mob movements in your world. Not all mobs, but some mobs get new movements. Like the piggy, when he oinks, his nose moves or when the cow walks, its udder will move around. And yes, I followed a cow around for five minutes staring at its moving udder. And you know what? That's pretty hot. Squids and gas get free-flowing tentacles, which makes them a bit cuter. Just look at how free-flowing their legs are now. Doggos get a new fluffy tail and a new sit animation. And when you pull out a bone, not that bone, put your pants back on, jeez, they will roll onto their sides. Creepers walk around, flopping their heads around, acting all sassy with life. Not a single shit is given with these creepers. The iron golem and the villager need pants on their heads. I can't I believe they just let it flop around like that. Piglins and zombie piglins have grown kneecaps and move around like humans. Such a weird sight. Slime now get jiggly with it when they jump around. It's such a little change, but it adds so much life to them. Spiders get bendy legs, which I don't get why they aren't like this in vanilla. And endermen look like a two-year-old throwing a tantrum because mum said no chicken nuggies. Just look at those arms flopping around everywhere. Easy villager trading is for you lazy people like me. Now trades are done with one click to get the trade done. Simple and easy and no longer needing to drag the items into the slot. You can also shift click to trade your whole stack of items in one click. Now that's what I call efficiency. Inventorio is the perfect mod to give you more space and more use of your inventory. Starting out you see there is a utility belt for storing any tools in and four extra slots for your left hand. Think of all the extra uses now for your left hand. When tools are in your belt, they automatically come out depending what block you hit, so you no longer have to scroll through items to mine or attack the mobs in front of you. And this is just a super handy addition, and it's a great time saver. The four slots in your left hand work the same, so you can store food, shears, shields, and totems of undying in there. And when you are getting attacked, you don't need to hold the totem for it to work. There is also a new enchantment for your leggings, so you can carry double the amount of items now. And it also adds in four extra slots to your offhand, so you can have eight lives like a cat by stacking totems in there. Just don't lose count, or you may lose your items, or maybe your world. Minecraft structures are as boring as your child telling a story, and could use a revamp. Immersive structures adds in 30 new structures by generating them in every biome around your blocky world. These structures are all unique and can be used as a great place to live or even a good place to raid. They spawn on the ground and in the air and the custom design gone into each one of these structures is amazing. They are filled with little traps and even have good loot when exploring. This is definitely a great quality of life mod for anyone who likes exploring like Dora. This mod is called More Villages, and in Fortnite terms, it means there is now more villages you can make trades with. There is now eight brand new out-of-the-box villages you can trade with, including new trades such as the Engineer, Forester, Oceographer, Hunter, and Miner. There is also a new Netherologist and Enderologist trader, so you no longer have to make Ender Farms for a special item. 
A lot of these villagers can trade some really well worth it items. But if you are an ungrateful little turd burger, you can at least appreciate the redesign on some cool trading stations to put in your builds. Fast Move is a mod that adds in parkour movements to your world. Now you have the ability to run on walls like Spider-Man, which is pretty epic. And it's just super fun to do. It can make you run super fast as well, but sometimes you will go slow so it can help with full damage. You can also slide on the ground so you can maneuver through one block high spaces and easily slither your way through caves. And you can also roll around like an armadillo, which can be used to tuck and roll as you come off high places. So you bet your sweet biffy I had to test out if we can survive a fall off this perfectly normal ancient city located at max height. Woohoo! Full damage is vaulted! You can also combine movements to fast travel around your world, and I must say, you can get up speed pretty quickly. As you can see, the spyglass in my inventory is glowing. That's because I used a little mod called Useful Spyglass, which makes your spyglass some army great equipment. Now, when you look at mobs, you will have a little HUD in the glass that gives you information on the mob, the health, and if it's passive or if it wants to unalive you. It is super accurate with reading mobs, and you can stay a safe distance away from the mob so you don't get attacked. Just like this guy here who didn't close his door and now is making reservations with Jesus. Fun fact, the baby villager and the adult villager have the same amount of health, so villagers give birth to super babies. To get this, you need to find an enchanting book called Marking, which has one to three levels. The higher the level, the longer the mobs will glow for when you look at them. Johnson, where are we? Oh, this is your home? And it's called a tidal town? Tidal towns adds in new lore and a new village floating in the ocean. Now when rowing your boat gently down the stream, you may stumble across a new villager town, which can be exciting to find. As you can see, these villagers do not have homes. So they don't sleep, but there is plenty of food and barrels to raid while you overthrow the water people. But these villagers do have homes. There are two different styles of towns you can find, both offering different needs. I really like the design of this mod. It's so simple it suits into vanilla Minecraft. And the best part about this mod is they serve as a foundation to a water base for you to build off. Minecraft only lets you build in straight lines, either this way or that way. But with diagonal fences, you can place fences in a 45 degree angle and in any orientation your heart desires. So you can now enhance your build with custom fences for your farms or just trap iron golems in them. You can make cool areas for your farm animals or even make circles to make it easier for your village to run around when trapped in by a zombie. Let's add some spice to Minecraft villages. Villager Plus adds in brand new structures and new villager variants for you to trade with. There are four new villages you can now find in your world, each with their own new items, tables and outfits. The Oceanogra Villager gets a sweet looking house with an aquarium built into it and has some decent trades. They also have a little fish tank which you can store plants and fish in. The Multiculturalist Villager has a cute flower garden home and will give you trays to spice up your garden life. They also have a plant box which can store up to four flowers in it. The Oculus Villager has a sweet little hut and will trade you some pretty nifty items. They also have a table you can store XP in or trap the souls of your dead enemies. And you can take that XP back at any time you like. The Alchemist Villager is a mad scientist who has a house with nether fungies growing on it and he has some pretty cool trades. He also has an Alchemist table which can turn gunpowder, a potion and three empty bottles into three potions. Now that's what I call efficient. These new structures spawn in all biomes and can change depending on on the biome they spawn in and their tables are quite functional for you to use this mod is a great mod if you're looking to add some vanilla friendly villages to your world i present to you sword displays the perfect way to display your handheld meat stick in a case if you head over to your crafting table by the sea and place items in this order and wham bam thank you ma'am you got yourself a sword display stand and you can also make many different variants in case you're a poor minecraft person and if that's not good enough for you you can also make a glass case by adding in some glass to the crafting table these displays are great for showcasing or storing your Minecraft sword and can be rotated to be spiked down or spike up, which can lead to some questionable Minecraft mechanics. These displays are such a great addition to your world and will match into any build with all the different variants you can have. I would love to see this implemented into vanilla Minecraft. Dragon eggs are pretty much just a trophy. But what if we could hatch the dragon egg? Well, Dragon Mounts adds in eight dragon egg variants, and each one has its own cool little design to suit any build or biome you have called a home. Once you hatch your new dragon egg, you can tame it with some raw fish, but have a few fish with you, as these fatties can eat quite a lot of fish sometimes. Once tamed, you can whack a saddle on your sky horse and start flying around your world. And this is easily the best looking transportation you can have. You can also make them sit by giving them a bone so they won't follow you around everywhere you go. These dragons will also defend you, so you can use them as a weapon to attack villagers. But they don't have much health, so they won't be able to beat an iron golem alone. You'll have to help him out. They also have a nice death animation, but it wouldn't work properly with shaders for me. If you proceed to feed these sky lizards raw fish, 
They will also go raw and pop out a cute new egg for you to hatch. And my god, these baby dragons are so damn cute. Simple Shops is the perfect mod to use on your community server. This adds in little shops that you can choose the price of an item and how much it dispenses. I just love how cool and simple these displays look. And the best part is, players can't break the shop block and you don't have to be around the shop block for people to use it. There is also different colored meters on the shop to show you how much inventory is left and if you need to top any items up. To use stores, you just need the item used as cash and right click the shop to dispense your item. Super easy and super simple to use. Let's move back down to the nether one last time to give the nether fortress a massive overhaul with apocalyptic fortress. This mod gives a huge overhaul to Satan's base, the Nether Fortress, making it a huge landscape to explore with plenty of new items and challenges. There is now a main center room in each fortress, which just like your mum is huge and filled with plenty of mobs. There is plenty of mob spawners in here that spawn a blaze and wither skeletons. Oh, and these wither skeletons spawn with bows, so they can throw pointy sticks at you from a long distance. And there is also wither vines and leaves, which hurt mobs that walk onto it. So use them to your advantage. And there is a great new nether brick decoration that works super well with broken parts of a nether fortress. You can also now get piles of gold and books for decoration. And there is now a new explosive barrel. So you can attack with the skeletons just like you attack your toilet after last night's Taco Bell. You can now find a new chest in the fortress and it can be locked or unlocked. These chests look great and provide some good loot as well. Overall, just walking around the nether fortress with this mod is amazing and the creators have done an amazing job. There is also a fortress beacon, which can grant resistance to the fortress mobs, but be prepared for battle trying to reach it. This is the free version, and the creator has a paid version on his Patreon, with even more items, and I would highly recommend checking it out, as some of those items look pretty damn cool, and they are super useful. Essential is the perfect mod to use when you want to play with your mates. With Essential, you can host and create your own multiplayer servers to invite your friends to play on, and it's as easy as simply hosting a new world, inviting your friends, as you can see, I have loads of friends, and pick a world you have already created, which I believe can be modded or a vanilla world. You can customize the world to suit your personal preference so anyone can have a good time. The best part is there is also a heap of new emotes and cosmetics you can get. Some are free and some are paid for, but well worth the money if you use this regularly with your friends. Some of the effort gone into the cosmetics is insane and can be a real flex on your server. Just look at how the free cosmetics turn me into Harry Potter and go in well with your current skin. The animation on the emotes are super well done, and very clean and there are some great funny looking emotes in here too so now you can slaughter your friends and hit them with a dab to pay respects well when you see your buddy you can wave your arm and dislocate it there are also traversal emotes like the running emote and crikey does it look good just look at how well it works when moving around your world it is silky smooth and it also turns you into a god when you go into creative mode and start flying now here's a sneak peek into the minecraft end update Young is back at it again, this time with an end island revamp. When you spawn in, you notice you get a nice welcoming to the end with a new hut protecting you. And walking up to the dragon, you will notice the end columns look different and way cooler. But where is the dragon, you might ask? She is up your bum. And to summon her, just walk close to the new house in the middle, which triggers a summoning ritual. Beams go around, blowing up the obsidian column, bringing in end crystals for the dragon, which is a wicked watch. And once all the crystals are summoned, the dragon will appear ready to defend her territory. Shooting the end crystals is a little harder now, as they have objects blocking them, adding in a little extra challenge. The dragon now perches on top of the house, making it easier for you to go for the nape with your sword attack when attacking. It's like she's presenting herself to be killed. Once you unsubscribe the dragon from life, the end portal inside the house will open up so you can get the dragon egg and live a peaceful life. But you can also live a chaotic life by clicking the YouTube recommended video. They know what you want to watch, so you will be in for a good time. Do you want to merge with Minecraft Steve and become one with Minecraft? Well, first person model does just that. You have now grown a body and you can see your own limbs moving around, just like in real life. This is a great mod for anyone wanting to improve the first person look and all the movements are great. Nothing gets distorted, body movements are fluid and you can even see your cool skins. Makes it a lot more pleasing when attacking mobs and using a bow and arrow looks a lot better now. And even when you are swimming, you get to see your own arms flapping around. Falling leaves is a simple yet visually pleasing mod and when paired with the Stay True resource pack, it gives perfect spooky season vibes when entering certain forests, as you'll get a mixture of green and autumn trees. The leaves aren't over the top when falling, which is good, so you don't get too distracted by them. But when you're walking through a thunderstorm, these give off such a great vibe, as it looks like the leaves are falling off due to the high winds. 
Do you have really bad hay fever? Well, this is a perfect mod for you. Here we have cave dust, giving off particles just like in the nether, but in caves. And this makes caving a more immersive experience and can add more fear when around gravel. You can adjust how much dust you can see, so it can be light dust or enough dust to suffocate a whale aka your mum. I really like the atmosphere in caves when there is dust flying around. This is one of those quality of life mods that seems small but adds in a big difference to your world. Before I get into this mod I just want to give a warning that if you suffer from severe motion sickness these next few clips may make you feel a bit uneasy so watch at your own risk. This video has chapters if you want to skip to the next mod. Do a barrel roll gives a huge overhaul to the elytra so now you can fly around like you're in a fighter jet. There is no limits and movements are now controlled with your mouse and can fly gracefully around your world. You can do loop-de-loops with epic superhero landings or just loops around the air. You can also do barrel rolls, which after a few can make you dizzy, but you will feel like a boss. And once you become the Michael Jordan of Elytra flying, you can fly upside down and have the ground become the sky and the sky become the ground. These new movements will take some practice to get used to, but you will have way too much fun using this mod and find it hard to uninstall. This is probably my favorite mod I've installed and it's even client side, so you can use it on any server, but there is a chance it may not run as smooth and some anti-cheat systems on servers may think you're cheating, so use at your own risk or check with the server owners. Let's make loading your world fun. Chunks fade in turns your chunk loading into a fun bouncy castle. Instead of just appearing, they now fade in and rise up from underneath, making your world look so much better when spawning in. A nice touch I'd love to see as a toggle feature in vanilla Minecraft. You can also change in settings to have the chunks just fade in if you don't like the bouncy effect. But the bouncy effect is cooler than vanilla ice when spawning into a new world. Sound Physics Remastered is a mod that majorly overhauls sounds, making you feel more immersed in your world. You hear the effects more when you're in caves, underwater, or in the nether. So strap yourself in and listen to enhanced Minecraft sounds. Mob Plax is a great mod that displays the health of any mob above its head, but it does it in a subtle way that looks very clean. With shaders on, you can notice it more at night, and it looks great. It's also super accurate with the health levels as well, and it also shows armor level, so you know what mobs to use better weapons on. This works on all entities, including sea creatures, the warden, the wither, and even the ender dragon. And it also fits in very well with any mobs that have name tags, so the text doesn't overlap. And this is also a client-side mod, so you can use it on any server that you like. So now you can tell your friends that mob is one-shot, even when he has full health. Mouse wheelie is a great client side mod to improve the items in your UI. Now you can use your mouse wheel to move items out of your inventory and even to put them back in your inventory. Makes it super easy and feels cleaner when grabbing items now. And you can even be more precise with the items and pick up as many as you want. This is definitely much easier than having to click and drag. Physics mod is an insane mod that feels illegal to be a client side mod, but you can bet your sweet daddy's left nut this is a client side mod. And I'm gonna run this on the Neo Network server to prove you wrong. Breaking blocks gives you a particle effect just like real life, but wear shoes so you don't get splinters. Items even get physics and lay on the ground like your pet goldfish out of water. Mobs get ragdoll effects when they die, so their lifeless bodies can fly around in the wind. You can obtain a soccer ball, or in this case a baby villager, and play soccer with the local village kids to see who can kick the ball the furthest. Watching mobs fly in the wind is a great way to pass the time. Doors move smoother than Michael Jackson when he was a criminal, and the wind physics are great. The way banners and cloth smooth are just like butter, and grass and sugarcane flop around more than the boys locker room. Whoa, whoa, baby zombie. Hey, I'm trying to record a video here. You can now make snow tracks in the snow so you never get lost when exploring and it makes it feel like real life. And oh my god, you can feel like Captain Jack Sparrow sailing your boat through waves bigger than your mum. You can adjust the waves to be calm or high and sailing around the seven seas in high waves is so fun. But sailing through calm water is more relaxing. There is also little ripple effects in the water when you move because attention to detail. You can also adjust and change these settings to freely suit the world you want and to be able to suit your computer. Some of these features are only available in the paid version of physics mod via patreon but they are well worth it and keep getting new additions all the time how painful is it when you have multiple shulker boxes but you don't know what is in each shulker box well now you have learned some wizardry from all those witches you have unalived and you can see what is in each shulker box while you hold it in your inventory 
This is super handy and saves a ton of time placing down a shocker box only to find it has the wrong gear or the wrong items. So you can thank me later for this hidden tip. And a nice little touch this mod has, the inventory background stays true to the color of the shocker box. This mod adds in splashes and droplet particles to your world. When you throw objects into the water, you get a cool splash animation and particle droplets in the water. The size of the items will make different size splashes. If you drop a little petite item, you get a little petite splash. But if you drop your mum in the water, you get a huge splash, ready to wipe out the planet. Waterfalls also get splashes at the bottom of them to make them a bigger need in your world. This mod also enhances water sounds for a more immersive feel, and it also works on lava, so you can have a fun time smacking piglins into the lava. But you know what mod is client-side? A little mod called Blur. It blurs out the background of all menus that you open up, giving a more immersive feel, and I personally think this should be a part of vanilla Minecraft, as it looks super clean. Such a great little mod. This works on crafting tables, trading with villagers, opening chests, furnaces, anything that has a menu on it will have a blurred background. But you know what else is great? Hitting the sub button with your nana's toe. Go on, give it a try. Next up, we got Enhanced Vigils. The perfect mod for anyone who likes some spice in their life. When you take damage, you now get effects on screen such as blood, dust, burn marks, blurry vision, and heartbeats. When you get low on health, your screen will give you an impending doom vibes, which means eat food before you start riding the sin wagon to your last breath. And it's super immersive, making you feel fear when your health is low. And it's also a great indicator, which changes depending on how low your health is. When you get hit by explosions, your screen goes blurry and you lose your hearing for a bit. So the same effect you get when your mum smacks you upside the head with a flip-flop. Be careful when going near Enderman, as your eyeballs get that TV static update which can raise your anxiety levels a little high. Overall, this is a great mod that makes you feel more immersed in Minecraft and can go in well with certain mod packs. This is a semi-client-side mod, so you won't get the full effects when using it on a server unless it's installed on the server. Let's make your Minecraft screen cleaner than your Nana's house. This simple mod will hide your hotbar when it's not in use, but it reappears when you change items or open your inventory. Just like I did into your mum's DMs, it will slide gracefully up on your screen so you can see what you got and where your items are. A simple, clean client-side mod that gives you so much more screen space. You can also customize this mod to have different animations and only have certain parts of your HUD showing to suit your needs. And it's also compatible with other HUD enhancing mods. This mod is a simple yet great mod called show me what you got. And if you are on a server and want to show off your newly enchanted weapon without dropping it, all you need to do is hover over your weapon and press Control T and it will add your weapon to chat for everyone to see. This works great for servers as you no longer have to drop items or meet up with people to show them off. And items can be shown in chat for everyone to see no matter where you are. And it works seamlessly around normal chat by being vanilla friendly and not looking too out of place. Starting off, we got Item Borders. Item Borders is a lifty little mod that outlines your items in your inventory and your hotbar. The color of the outline will change depending on the rarity of the item. This is a subtle change that adds a ton of difference and makes it easy to find and sort certain items. This can be great for item sorting machines if you want to allocate items to rarity. You can also change the config file to have borders on all items, but common item borders are turned off by default. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why is your tooltip box different? That's because I'm using legendary tooltips. And let me tell you, this makes the tooltip box legendary. Each item tooltip now gets its own little border around it, which looks super nice, and some of them even have their own subtle little animations. And it even gives items pronouns by telling you if the item is decoration, weapon, or a miscellaneous item. This mod is perfect for anyone using themed mods or resource packs. No longer do you have to break crops and plant them again with a separate click like a peasant. Harvest with ease makes it so when you pick a crop, it will automatically plant it, and if you have a stack of bone mill, woof, it's time to go on a maximum overdrive, baby. It makes gathering crops so much quicker so you can spend more time beating off villagers who try and steal your hard-grown crops. It's such a time saver being able to harvest and plant in one click. Sometimes hitting F5 isn't good enough, unless it's for a Minecraft intro. These two mods, better third-person and camera utils, give the freedom of what I imagine Mojang feels when letting the community make their game good. You now get full camera customization in third-person with sliders from camera utils, and it's super customizable. So you can mimic the view of your favorite FPS game by adjusting the sliders to sit the camera anywhere your heart desires. So you can always get a look at this thick view. You can even detach the camera to leave it in one spot and watch yourself commit village war crimes or just take a selfie. And the normal zoom function is controlled by scroll wheel, so you can zoom in as far as you want. Better third person offers free camera movement so you can easily see behind or beside you when running. This is definitely a mod that should be in vanilla Minecraft and makes exploring a whole lot more enjoyable and a lot more free. Just look at how much better it is when riding around on horses in the wild. I have more freedom than America. <laughs> The normal inventory is as boring as your dad's cooking, 
but Inventory HUD Plus makes the inventory look a lot more useful by showing off important information. You can now see all pieces of armor as a health level, so when you are slapping pillages with your meat stick, you will know when it's about to break as it will change color indicating it's getting low. There is also a quiver icon to show how many arrows you have left, as well as a backpack to show you how many slots you have left. Potion icons also get a makeover from Bob Ross himself. So if you can count past 10, they now have little timers showing off how long the effect has left. You can also have your inventory on the screen so you can always see what you got. This mod is also super customizable and you can change a lot of settings on the icon sizes, the timer, types of damage they show, and you can even change where they sit on screen so they aren't in your field of view. Or you can make them block your field of view, whatever floats your boat. Gone are the days of having to break a crop and replant it with a second click. With Replanter, all you do is right click with a crop of choice in your hand and it whacks away the grown crop and replants a new one all in one click. We are living in the future now, old man. This makes farming super easy and saves a lot of time so you can get back to torturing villagers quicker. You can replant any crop of choice. It doesn't have to be the same crop that's already in the ground. This mod will make it feel like you can enter the Olympics. Jump over fences gives you superhuman strength, so you can now jump onto fences. Go on other days of needing a piece of carpet to get onto a fence. Now you can simply jump onto any fence with no issues. This also works for walls and gates, and you can also jump 1.5 blocks high by stacking a slab on top of the fence. But this will be the max limit you can jump. Don't you hate it when you place a sign and you notice you typed a letter wrong after you finish it? Or having to place down the same sign a hundred times well sign tools gives you the freedom to copy and paste from sign so you no longer have to type out the same sign over and over again making it super easy to make custom signs or decorate your mate's house in signs you can also edit the signs by changing the row you type in moving the row up or down after you've typed it and even copy and paste certain rows and move them around this is a simple mod that can make such a big difference to save some frustration oh and it's client side so you can use it on any server in any way you like not enough animations is the perfect quality of life mod for your world as you can see, climbing ladders now gives you a butt crack. But please remove your eyes from my ass and look at how good the climbing animation is. And when you stop to look around, you will hold one hand on a ladder because you're a cool kid. When crawling, you now get a swimming animation, which looks great. There is now little arm movements when you go to use a crossbow or use a spyglass. These are subtle, but they look very good. When you reload the bow, the item in your hand now disappears and doesn't block your field of view. Swapping between maps or just putting a map in your hand gives a nifty little hand movement. And boy, the boats. Why isn't this a vanilla feature? Your arms move when you row your boat gently down the stream. And when you turn, you only move one arm. So you can have uneven moving arms when you turn and start going forward. Riding horses gives you a little bucking animation to help give you the effects of chewing five gum and stimulating your senses. And now when you put weapons out of your hand, they sit on the side of your body, which is a great little effect. And I'd love to see this as a legging enchantment in vanilla Minecraft. Now, are you like me and have the IQ of room temperature? What if I told you there was a mod that told you how to do everything and even gave you a little hotbar in the corner of your screen to showcase all items? Well, just enough items is the perfect mod for anyone who forgot how to craft a block of wood. This gives you a list of all the items in the game and tells you how to craft them, even if you haven't unlocked it yet. It will tell you each way to make an item, including all of its different variants with different blocks. You can also find out about enchantment levels when enchanting any of your items, so you never leave your XP farms too early. And it even tells you how to make each potion. This mod also works for any custom mob that includes custom items, weapons, food, decorations, anything to your heart's desire. So you will always know how to craft any item without having to unlock it first. No longer will you be a peasant and only open doors one at a time. Double doors makes doors work together, so when you open one, the door next to it opens too. So run inside, beat up a villager, and walk out closing both doors at once to assert dominance. This works on trap doors, and you can also activate it with levers, switches, and redstone. You can also configure the files to open up more than two doors. So you can flex and open up ten doors at once. Very unnecessary, but you can do it. So if you have the IQ of Elon Musk, this could be very handy for certain farms. Visuality adds hit effects on certain mobs and ores in your world. When you hit villagers, they drop emeralds like cash. So you now feel like you are robbing the villagers. These villagers have to watch out for Link now. Skeletons now drop bones when you hit them, both wither and normal skeletons. But you can't pick up these bones, they're just for looks. Chickens lose feathers when you hit them, so after you sent them off to meet Jesus, you don't have to spend time peeling feathers off your chicken breasts. Slime blocks make little clouds when they jump around, which why don't they have these normally? Such a great little addition for them. And certain ores will now glimmer and sparkle underground, which makes them a lot easier to find and the sparkling inside geodes just look so damn cool. And if you have sold your soul to the devil, you can head into the nether and explore Soul Sand Valley. 
where you might just see your soul floating around. As every time you jump around, souls will escape from the soul sand. This is a mod to help out you silly little gooses out there. Merchant Makers gives a little icon above villages with a trade, so you can identify with which villages you can trade with and identify which trades each villager has. So now you don't have to wander around like a dumbass interacting with each villager to find the villager you need. Chest Tracker does exactly what it's called. If you've lost an item or have a huge amount of chests, go to your inventory and click the magnifying glass. Click the item you're looking for and yes, queen, your chests are now extra. They will flash rainbow indicating what chests your items are in. You can even see through walls and blocks so it may help when finding buried treasure. Show me your skin gives you a little customizable menu so you can make armor transparent or remove the enchanted glow so you can now show off parts of your wicked skin that you just got made. Just take a look at how I can remove my pants. Whoa, buddy! My eyes are up here, you sicko! As well as making armor as transparent as you want, you can also remove shields and swords from your point of view and only make them appear when in combat so that way you won't forget them when you start getting attacked. This affects all players in your world, so how you see yourself is how you see everyone else. Villagers are real people too, so let's install a mod that gives the villagers names. This mod has a list of over 9,000 names. Vegeta is shaking in his boots right now. These names can generate for all villagers in your world. So now you can easily remember what villagers have the traits you want by looking at their names. And come on, kids aren't named Gladys. Anyone named Gladys is just spawned as an adult. You can also go through the config files and add in your own custom villager names to add some spice to your world. You can even find the villager named Karen and give her the ever heard 1-2 combo and smack her with your hoe. And I bet you're wondering why Karen's name went red. And it's not because she's angry. It's because of a little mod called Name Pain. And if you go to the annual village meetup, you can commit Grand Arson and make a village full of orphans. And if you pause it at the right time, you can see this floating meat sack. His red name tag indicates he is floating to meet Jesus. But as you can see, Floria has a red name tag and she survived. So here is a little present. Name pain is an indicator for mobs health. The more damage they take, the darker the red gets. This is a great indicator for your pets. If you can see their name is getting red, feed them and heal them back up to full health. This would also be handy on servers with your mates, so you know if they are one shot or not. And it works well if you manage to slap a name tag on hostile mobs to see how much of a flogger they have left. Eating animation adds in great looking animations for when you're eating food or drinking soup. This is such a clean animation and is something that should be in vanilla Minecraft. These animations just look so damn cool, and I bet these villagers and iron golems are jealous they don't have the skills I have. This just adds so much life to your character. You're no longer an NPC in the Minecraft world. Do you hate it when you just got your elytra, and when you go to fly, you forget you have a chest plate on and fall to your death? But instead of meeting Jesus, you respawn and come back with the IQ of outside room temperature. And now when you jump off, you can swap between your chest plate and elytra with only using a simple hotkey. This is a super handy mod for anyone who uses an elytra all the time. Just make sure you set it to a hotkey you can remember easily. Or you might fall to your death and lose all your stuff and I might laugh at you. As you can see, I set my hotkey to go off every time your mum feeds me a cookie. We all know the vanilla advancement menu looks as good as Donald Trump's orange turkey flap on his neck. Well, with better advancements, it gives you a bigger advancement screen, so now you don't have to scroll through to find your advancements. They all fit on the screen, making them easier to find and more appealing to look at. After sneaking into a villager's house and punching him while he sleeps, you go over and raid a chest only to see there is now a little animation when picking up items. Tiny item animations is a subtle client side mod that gives a little more life to your inventory by making items move a little bit when they are picked up. This isn't a huge change, but it's a great little addition for anyone who spends a lot of time in inventories, enchanting or smelting items. Crafting tweaks brings some new buttons to the crafting table and saves you time when you need to craft two stacks of buckets so you can do it in record time. There are three little buttons on the side of your crafting table each with their own little time-saving feature. One to rotate your items around the crafting table, one to spread the items evenly around the table, and one to remove all the items from the table. And for the right people, this could be a great mod, but not as illegal as a little mod called InfMove. This mod allows you to pull up your inventory and keep on moving around your world. This is unheard of, but super pleasing to do. So you can now run from danger to swap out weapons for food and fill up your hunger bar, or even walk around your crafting table to avoid getting hit by a mob when crafting your weapons. Camera overhaul is a simple mod that makes you feel more connected with Steve. Your head now moves like it would in real life with a floppy neck. You get subtle camera tilts when walking, moving side to side, and when turning around. This is a great mod for feeling a little bit more immersed in your world. And if you are brave enough, you can turn up the sensitivity in the config file to give yourself a noodle neck, and you'll probably get motion sickness looking at it. 
Smooth Swapping is a mod that gives an animation when moving items from your inventory to chests or vice versa. This is such a satisfying mod and makes the HUD for chests, tables and furnitures such a smooth experience. Smooth Swapping animations is better than the cold side of your pillow, which I think everyone can agree on. Don't you hate it when you explore in the wild, you take damage from hostile mobs so you come back home and beat up villagers to feel better? You raid a chest that is definitely not yours, except there is magic food that is inside. It now shows how much of your hunger and heart bar it will fill up. So now you can get an accurate reading on how safe you will be when eating certain items. If only food worked like this in real life. This is a super handy visualizer to have for when you're in tough situations or you're just too far from home with no food left. When you're stuck in the wild, desperate times call for desperate measures. So you just try and eat anything you can get your grubby little hands on. Is your sense of direction as bad as your girlfriend when she gives directions? Well, look no further. Xero's mini maps, God, I hope I said that right, gives you a little or a big mini map in the corner of your screen, which is small or with the touch of a button, you can make it bigger. I wish real life worked like that. It gives yellow dots for all entities in the area of the map and in certain level range, so it will change the higher or lower you go. Speaking of going down, when you head into the caves, it gives an accurate look for the cave systems around and even shows off all the points of interest and structures. The map even works in the nether and in the end, so you can never get lost in any dimension again. This mod is also very customizable, so you can change it to suit your needs. YDM's Weapon Master gives you a new look when holding weapons. When holding swords, hoes, pickaxes, and bows, they will now rest on your body. A visual mod that can look really cool and suit certain themes in certain worlds. This is just a pleasing mod to look at and makes me feel more like a warrior. It's a very well done mod and it utilizes nearly every slot in your inventory bar, so you got plenty of areas to put your weapon depending where you want them to sit. Loot beams adds in beams to all items floating on the ground, making them easier to find in certain locations. Beams will emit different colors depending on how rare the item is. White being normal common items and purple being the rarest items. You can look at each beam and it will tell you the item name. Or you can crouch and all the item names will appear to see what they are. Surf's up dude, the new water foam update just dropped. Wakes adds in bubbles and foam around all of your water movements, which is a great quality of life mod and it works so seamlessly with other objects hitting the water. And the look of the wake behind your boat makes you look like a cool dude when doing donuts in your boat and leaving a little skid trail when you take off. And if you pause at the right time, the wake makes the shape of a giant. Let's give your Minecraft characters some more life with not enough animations. This mod allows you to draw bows like a gangster ready for a drive-by, and you get a nice little hand movement when loading up both bows and crossbows, which looks neat. When you hold maps, you move your arm up and down, indicating you are looking at said map when it's in your hand. And if you change between the two maps, you do a little shimmy. You can now use boats while looking at your map without having to take it out of your inventory, giving yourself a sweet field of view while you look for buried treasure. Making boat driving look much easier when looking for that sweet buried desert booty. When climbing ladders, you move like a dogger on all fours and it looks great. Such a great animation. There is also movement when using your shield to defend yourself. And you can poke out your eyeball with the animations of looking into a spyglass. Skin Layers 3D adds in layers to all Minecraft skins you look at. Their bodies will no longer be pancakes and now have some depth in them to fit into the blocks in your world. The amount of 3D will vary depending on the detail on the skin being used. And it even works on mob heads so your battle trophies look great as well. Now let me show you one of the best mini map mods to date. Voxel Maps is your friendly neighborhood cube map that lives in the top of your screen. It does a perfect job showing you where you are with your cords underneath so no more F3. And it rotates when you rotate so you always know where you are facing. I think it does a great job with showing off builds on the map so you can get creative and show off your 2D skills. Mobs will also show up on the map when they are nearby and depending on the height limit they spawn at they may be slightly faded on the map to indicate they're at a different depth. This also works in the nether and works great with biome blending so you can easily see what biomes are coming up. You can also full screen the map to see where you have explored so you won't get lost exploring new areas again and also very helpful to see where you haven't explored. You can even set markers on the map for any point of interest in your world or server that you play on. And the best part is you can easily teleport by right clicking on the map to go to any location of your choice. And you don't even need a marker on the map to be able to teleport. This will only work if teleporting is allowed on the surfer, which it's allowed on the Thrillcraft server. The map also shows off players that are nearby, so no more sneak attacks by enemies. This is a great map mob with features that are customizable to suit your needs.